Hey there, Eco students. It's Mr. White here with video two about GDP. So if you didn't watch video one, please go back and watch video one. Uh, but if you have watched video one, let's talk now about how we can analyze GDP uh, to try to understand what's happening with production and economic growth. So in order to analyze GDP, we have to discuss the difference between real and nominal GDP. Okay, when economists want to compare GDP over time, especially they have a really big problem and that problem is something called inflation. Inflation means that over time, the price of goods and services in the economy tends to increase. And since our measurement of GDP is based on current market prices for goods and services, inflation makes comparison across years pretty difficult. Just to drive home what I'm talking about here, consider a McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese. Um, Way back in 1970, believe it or not, that quarter pounder with cheese cost 70 cents. Now, today in 2020, that same quarter pounder with cheese cost $4.99. So that's a pretty big inflation rate. It's, it's a little bit more than six times as expensive today as it was back in 1970, but it's still the same product. It's a, it's a quarter pound hamburger with onions and pickles and catch up and so forth, right? So um, inflation just simply means that your dollar doesn't have as much power as it used to have. Uh, now, like I said, the reason why that's a problem for measuring GDP is because of the fact that we measure GDP in dollars. So if you were to just look at the nominal GDP of the United States back in 1970, meaning the GDP of 1970 measured in 1970s dollars, it would look really small compared to the GDP of the United States in 2020. But that doesn't necessarily mean they were producing way less stuff. It just is an indication that dollars were more powerful in 1970 than they are in 2020. So if we want to measure economic growth, meaning if we want to know how much our production has increased from some time in the past until today, or just between two different time periods that we choose, we need to have a clean measurement of GDP that does not have inflation included. Now, the kind of GDP we've talked about up until now is what's known as nominal GDP, meaning GDP that's not adjusted for inflation. Okay? As a matter of fact, as we go through this course, we'll talk a lot about nominal measurements. Anytime I say nominal, I mean not adjusted, not adjusted for inflation. Now, when we measure GDP using current market prices of goods and services, the problem we run into is that inflation could distort our measurement. Uh, it might lead us to think that more or less was produced relative to another time period. In other words, it could lead us to incorrect conclusions if we're comparing two or more years using nominal GDP. So instead, we want to use real GDP, which is GDP that's adjusted for inflation. If we measure GDP using the prices of goods and services from a base year, then there's no inflation to distort our measurement of how much was produced. This is the way that economists actually compare GDP from one year to another. So from here on out, just be used to talking about real GDP because as economists, real GDP is far more interesting and useful for us. Now to, to help you understand the difference between nominal and real GDP. I've got a little example for you here. Now imagine that we live in a simple economy where only two goods are produced, cars, and trucks okay now let's say that these cars that we produce cost $25,000 each and the trucks that we produce cost $30,000 each and in year one we produced 10 cars and 10 trucks like I said this is a small little economy we haven't produced anything else there's no government spending uh, there, there's no other kind of business investment there's no exports or imports uh, literally this is just consumer spending on cars that's our whole economy so if our whole economy is just consumer spending on cars, it's pretty easy to calculate our nominal GDP for year one, okay? The GDP would be the quantity of cars times the price, so 25,000 times 10, plus the quantity of trucks, which is 10 times the price, 30,000. You just add those two together. So if you need to pause the video right here, how much was our GDP in year one? That's right. The GDP was equal to 55 or sorry, $550,000. Uh, 25 times 10 is 250,000 plus 30,000 times 10, which is 300,000. Add those two together. You should have got $550,000. So that's like a, a measurement of how much we produced. We produced $550,000 uh, worth of stuff. Now let's say that in year two, our production levels don't change at all, but prices do. We have some inflation that kicks in. 
So you'll notice that in year two, a car costs $26,000. That's $1,000 more than year one. And a truck costs $31,000, which is also $1,000 more than year one. So we had $1,000 of inflation in the price of our cars and our trucks. Now, as I said, we still produce the same amount. So we still produce 10 cars and 10 trucks. So we can calculate the nominal GDP, meaning the GDP in year two prices as follows. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to and tell me how much was our GDP, at least in nominal terms, in year two. That's right, our GDP in year two was $570,000, okay? Um, now, if you were to compare that to the nominal GDP from year one, what conclusion might you draw? Well, you would think the production increased, right? 570,000 is more than 550,000 to the tune of 20,000. It, it would almost seem like maybe we produced another like cheap car that we didn't actually produce. So how can we get the real GDP for year two? Well, what we'd wanna do is calculate year two's GDP using the prices from our base year. In this case, our base year is year one. That's the year we're gonna start counting from and we're gonna use those prices to see what level of production we're at. So if we go back to year one prices, a car is 25,000 and a truck is 30,000 times the quantity from year two, which was 10, would be 25,000 times 10 plus 30,000 times 10, this is looking familiar, $550,000. That would be our real GDP for year two. So what that tells us is that there's been no increase in production. And if there's no increase in production, it means we're not producing more goods and services. That means the economy has not grown at all. If we were using nominal GDP, we would think that the economy did grow, but we know that the economy didn't grow because we've adjusted the prices in year two to reflect the level they were at back in year one. And that makes it possible to compare the level of production between year one and year two. Now, a really quick and easy way to evaluate changes in prices from one year to another uh, and to, to be able to compare GDP across the years is to use a price index. And the price index that we use for GDP is known as the GDP deflator. It's basically just a little quick mathematical way to remove inflation and make it easier for us to compare GDP from different years. The way that we calculate it is by taking the nominal GDP for a particular year, dividing that by the real GDP for that year, and then multiplying the result by 100. So if we think back to the example from the previous slide, we could apply the formula and find the GDP deflator for year two. Year two had a nominal GDP of $570,000 and a real GDP of $550,000. We multiply that by 100 and that gives us 103.6. Now the significance here is that the base year always has a deflator value of 100. I mean, just think of it this way. The base year has the same number for nominal GDP as it does for real GDP. In other words, the base year was year one, the nominal GDP was 550,000, and the real GDP was also 550,000. Anytime you divide a number by itself, it gives you one. One times 100 is 100, so the base year will always equal 100. The reason why that's significant is that you can take the GDP deflator from any other year and subtract the value of the base year, to find out how much inflation has occurred since the base year. In this case, prices in year two are 3.6% higher than year one, which is our base year. I know that because we can go 103.6 minus 100 equals 3.6. So that means 3.6% higher. And lastly, let's talk about real GDP per capita. Real GDP per capita just means real GDP divided by the total population. And this gives us an indication of the level of production and consumption contributed by each citizen in a society. If you took world geography before, or possibly even in your world history or US history classes, you might've heard of this before. But one thing that I always find is, is kind of disappointing is the way that it's usually taught in other classes is that this means how much money the average person makes. It's not exactly accurate. It doesn't mean that that's how much money the average person makes. If, if you wanna know that, you you could look at something like median household income. That's a much better uh, indicator. Instead, what real GDP per capita is supposed to indicate is the level of production that we expect from the citizens of a country due to a lot of different factors that are available to help them be productive, uh, like things like healthcare and education and, and political system and so forth. Um, so what we notice is that generally countries that have a high GDP per capita are countries that produce more goods and services. And as a result, the people have a higher standard of living.
Countries with a low GDP per capita are countries that produce fewer goods and services per person, and as a result, they have a lower standard of living. This doesn't mean that people from those countries are bad or, or that there's anything wrong with them culturally. It, it just simply means that different countries have different levels of productivity for their citizens. So like in the United States, we're a very highly productive country. Uh, our GDP per capita is over $62,000 per year. China, you might have thought they would be really high in GDP per capita, but actually because of their high population numbers, their GDP per capita is under $10,000. And in a country like Uganda, which is in Sub-Saharan Africa, their GDP per capita is only about $642 per year, uh, which pales in comparison to the US and, and even to China. So as you might imagine, life is very different for people in these countries. In the United States, we live a very modern and, and I would say comfortable lifestyle. In Uganda or in China, it's not always the case. So quick summary of what we've learned about GDP so far, okay? GDP just represents the total market value of all the final goods and services produced domestically in a given period of time. Usually we're talking about one year. Uh, this is a measurement, remember, of how much we have produced. It does not mean how much money we have. So don't tell me it's how much money we make or how much money we have. It's a measure of how much we produced. And the way we calculate it, at least in terms of output, is that GDP equals C plus IG plus G plus XN. Remember that C means consumer spending, IG means gross private investment or gross business investment, G means government spending, and XN means net exports, which is the value of all of our imports uh, minus, or excuse me, the value of all of our exports minus the value of all of our imports. Things that are excluded from GDP are like intermediate goods, used goods, transfer payments, underground transactions, and of course, black market transactions. Um, inflation is just a general increase in prices. We're going to talk a lot more about this later, but for now, just know that the way you can calculate the inflation rate is that you take year B or like whatever the later year is minus year A, whatever your earlier or starting year is, divide it by year A, and that would tell you the price change or the increase in prices. Nominal GDP is not adjusted for inflation, while real GDP is adjusted for inflation. And we have that thing called the GDP deflator, which is just the nominal GDP divided by the real GDP times 100. And last of all, real GDP per capita is real GDP divided by the population. And this is our best measurement of standard of living. All right, guys, that's it for GDP. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you next time.